Hello and welcome everyone to the Building a Movies Watchlist application workshop. My name is Tara Van Cleve and I'm a marketing event manager for the developer initiative here at Oracle. Today, we're excited to show you how easy it is to join REST data services with local tables to build an app that anyone can use. If you do not currently have an Oracle Cloud account, we encourage you to create one now and to select the Ashburn data region. We'll be recording today's session, so if you'd like to follow along with the lab walkthrough and then complete the lab later on at your own pace, we'll be sending the link to the recording to the same email address that you used to register with for the event. You'll also have the opportunity to participate in a short quiz on the material covered in today's lab. Upon completing the quiz, you'll receive a developer masterclass badge that you can share to your social media, recognizing your commitment and earn expertise. If you have any questions during the workshop, please ask them in the Slack channel and we'll answer them throughout the session. The link to join is bit.ly slash join underscore the underscore Slack. And once you're in, you'll land in the general channel. So from there, you can search for hands-on lab. So hol-movies-watchlist-app to reach our dedicated space for Q&A today. And special thanks to Monica Godoy and Jason Haynes who will be helping answer questions. Today's workshop will be presented by Paige Hansen, member of technical staff and Apex developer. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Paige. Hey everyone, my name is Paige Hansen. Um, welcome to building a movies watch list application. Um, just to start off, I'm gonna give you guys a sneak preview of what our application that we're building is gonna look like today. So you're gonna create um, an application in Apex where you can create your own personalized watch list. You can search for movies. You can view details and information for a specific movie, um, add those movies that you want to your watch list, and then filter through, sort, and search your watch list. So my name is Paige Hansen. Like I said, um, I am a member of the Apex team here at Oracle, and I joined last July. And when I joined the, the team, I was pretty much brand new to Apex. And so with it, one of my first projects was putting together this workshop, um, this hands-on lab, building a movies watch list. And I think doing labs like this is a fantastic way to learn Apex, to get better at Apex, and just become familiar with the environment. Um, Monica and Jason are going to be helping with Q&A today. They're two members of our awesome PM team. Um, and so they will be monitoring the Slack channel to make sure that any questions you guys have are answered. Make sure, like Tara said, this is a good time to create your free cloud account. You can use this link, scan the QR code here, um, and just go ahead and set your region to be uh, in the United States, in the Ashburn region. Um, we're currently in the process of upgrading our cloud accounts to be to, to have Apex 21.2, which is the new version of Apex. Um, but the Ashburn region is still in 21.1, which is the version of Apex that we're going to be using today for the lab. Um, there are some slight differences. We'll go over that later when we get into the lab. But um, while you're signing up for your free cloud account, you can also use this time to go ahead and sign up for an API key on the movie database. Uh, so we are gonna be using the movie database to get data from, um, from their API and use that for our app. And if you don't wanna sign up for this right now, that's okay. We do have an API key that we'll be providing for this workshop, but it will be deactivated after the workshop. So if you want to continue to use your application um, or work on your application further, you're gonna to need to sign up for your own API key. You can do that now, or you can do that a little bit later. If you'd like to do it now, what you'll have to do is follow this link uh, to themoviedb.org slash sign up, sign up for a new account, and then once you log into your account, you're going to want to click the icon up in the top right corner for your application settings, which you will select from the menu here. That's going to take you to this page where from the left pane, you're going to select API that's on the settings page, and that will open up 
this window, this page, where you will be able to enter some information about what you're going to be using this API key for. Note that you will have to enter your application URL. Um, so you're going to have to hold off on this piece until we've created our application so that you can enter that URL here and then click create your API key um, and that will get you set up for the movie database. Um, these instructions are also in the lab instructions at the end of lab one. And so if you'd like to do this later, then you can always access the, these instructions there. Like Tara said, make sure you are part of the Slack channel so that you can ask questions if you have them. Um, and then before we start the lab, I'd love to introduce low code and talk a little bit about Oracle Apex, just to give you guys a little bit of background. Some of you may already be familiar with this. Others may be brand new. That's okay. And so we want to give you as much information and education as we can. So with traditional programming, you're writing a lot of code. And so low code, you can use an environment to create applications with using a graphical UI where you can use things like wizards, drag and drop, um, set, setting options to build your app. So a low code development platform is that software that provides programmers with that graphical UI. Um, it's really easy to get started. It's super productive. It's accessible. So this means that anyone can use low code to build applications. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to write a ton of code just to get started. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to employ feature rich components. Low code is also scalable, which allows you to start small with an app that you've built and over time grow the complexity and functionality of your app. It's extensible, so you're not constrained by the box that you're in which can be a problem with no code development platforms where you, you get what you get and there's not much room to extend upon that. With low code platforms, um, you can add any functionality that's not provided out of the box through integrations, plugins, and custom code. Um, and then finally, low code solutions are all about delivering rich functionality to users with little effort, minimal code. So why use low code platforms? Like we just pointed out, you can build apps a lot faster with less effort. And then you can also develop, deliver higher quality applications and low code platforms to promote consistency across those develop, developed apps. The ease and the speed of developing apps with low code reduces those development costs without sacrificing the quality, quality of your application. And low code also allows you to focus more on the business requirements instead of getting caught up in writing a lot of code, because each business is going to have their own custom requirements, custom rules, and custom business flows. So you can focus on those things instead of having to worry about just getting the app up and running. So with that said, enter Oracle Apex. Oracle Apex is a low code application development platform. It's one of the industry leading low code platforms for enterprise apps. Um, it allows you to build scalable, secure and responsive web apps. It's super easy to get started and learn. So like I said, I joined the Apex team last July. I did not have a lot of experience with Apex and within very little time, I was building apps with Apex. It was very easy to learn and you can do so much with Apex. Um, Apex is also SQL and REST friendly, so you can write SQL statements within your app to get specific data that you want. Um, you can set up REST data sources, which is what we're going to do today to get data from outside uh, sources. And um, Apex is included for free with all Oracle databases. So you don't have to pay a lot of money just to get up and running. Um, there are global success stories across all industries, and it's a huge developer community. Um, of over 500,000 people, which is pretty impressive. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is we're first going to provision our um, Apex instance and get started with a uh, 
with a Apex workspace, and then we'll start building our application and have something up and running in no time. I'm going to start a new share. All right, so I've, can everyone, uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen okay. I have gone ahead and logged in to my Oracle Cloud account. So hopefully you all should have signed up for an account at this point. You can log in. When you log in, this is the screen that you should be seeing. To get started, we're going to go to the top left corner to the menu, bu menu button. We're gonna select Oracle Database from the menu, and we're gonna select Autonomous Transaction, transaction Processing. Um, I actually have a few older databases here. Um, when you get to the Autonomous Database screen, we're gonna select Create Autonomous Database. Now here is where you're going to choose your settings for your autonomous database. Most of them are default and we're gonna leave them like that, but make sure that you've selected the correct compartment that is your own. Um, we're gonna leave the display name and database name. It's gonna be a transaction processing workload type. We're gonna leave most of these settings for database version, we're actually going to select 19C instead of 21C. Leave everything else. We do want to make sure that the always free option is selected. Mine was set by default and yours should be too, but just verify that always free is set to on. Under administrator credentials, the username is already set to admin. We are going to select a password. So make sure you're going to you set a password that you're going to remember easily. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enter a password. Just confirm that password. We're going to leave the type of network access selected, license included, and we should be good to go. So we're going to cr click create autonomous database. Now it's going to take a few minutes for our database to get provisioned. So once this turns to green, we are going to be good to go. While we wait for that, we're going to go over to the Live Labs instruction link and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the, uh, we're going to go ahead and launch our workshop. So you're going to select Launch Always Free Workshop. And that will take us to the introduction page. And the, this is where our instructions are located. So we have a total of 10 labs today. We're probably only gonna make it through hopefully the first eight. As you can see, these last two are optional. So they will improve your application and they can be fun to go do on your own. But these first eight are gonna be the most important ones and they're gonna build the, the majority of the application. Um, like I said, or I showed you a little bit earlier what our final application is going to look like. I just want to give you another look at what the application will, will be and what will, it'll look like. So this is the home page of my application. This is my watch list, my personalized watch list, and I have a few movies in here. On this home page, you can sort your watch list by title. You can search it by rating or sort it by rating. Um, you can search for a movie. So say I want to search for everything with Harry in it. So we got two movies, um, we'll reset this. And then we can also filter through our movies. So we can see that four movies were released in the 2020 decade. And I have watched one of them. We can clear this. We see that one of them is 90 minutes to two hours. Um, so we were able to filter through our watch list, which is really helpful once we get a lot of movies in here. In addition to that, if we wanna add a movie. We're gonna have a button up here that sends us to the movie search page. We can see movies that have been watched or already marked as added. Let's say I wanna add turning red to my watch list. I can click on that movie. And this is what the details page looks like. We have 
list of cast members, an overview, a little bit about the movie. Um, so I'm going to add this to my watch list. You can see that's already been marked as added. Let's say I want to add another Harry Potter movie to my watch list as well. So I'm going to search for Harry Potter. And I can see all the results that come up having to do with Harry Potter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire to my watch list. We can see again our cast list, some details about the movie. I'm going to add this and I'm going to go ahead and add the sixth one as well. Now I can also remove movies from my watch list through the movie details page. So I'm going to remove the first Harry Potter movie from my watch list by clicking remove from watch list. And I'm satisfied with everything that I've done here. So I'm going to close the movie search page. We see that our watch list has been updated. So pretty good stuff. If I've watched a movie, I can mark it as watched just by clicking at watch this. And that's a real quick summary about our watch list and what it's going to look like. And this is what we're working up to throughout the entire lab. So some little something for you guys to look forward to. Let's go back and check in on our database, see how it's doing. All right, so hopefully by this point, your autonomous database is ready and it's available. This is what it should look like once it is. To get started with Apex, you're gonna click on the Tools tab. And here we can see Oracle Application Express. We're gonna open Apex here. Now it's going to take just a second to get up and running. So if hopefully you remember your admin password when we signed up for our or when we provisioned our, our autonomous database, you had to enter a password for the admin uh, administrator role. So now you're going to go ahead and enter that password that you created and click sign in to administration. Once you've signed in, you're immediately prompted to create a workspace. And that's exactly what we want to do. So we're going to click Create Workspace. Here, you're going to enter your database user, password, and workspace name. I'm just going to go ahead and call mine page. The workspace name is will get automatically filled from the database user. So that's fine. I'll leave the workspace name. And then I can create a password here. So I'm just going to enter a password that I want to use. So once you've filled out these fields, you can go ahead and click Create Workspace. And we see that our workspace has been created. We need to now sign out of administrative services, administration services and sign in to the page workspace to begin building our applications. So you can just go ahead and click on your workspace name. It'll take you straight to the sign-in page where your workspace and user has already been pre-filled. Enter the password that you just created for your workspace. Just mess my password up. And you're gonna click sign in. So at this point, we have provisioned an autonomous database. We have created a new workspace and we have signed into your work to our workspace. So hopefully there isn't too much confusion. Um, this is where we need to be to start lab one. So in our instructions, we're gonna go ahead. We just did the getting started with option two Oracle autonomous database. We're gonna go ahead and click on lab one. And this is where we're going to start building our application. So I'm just gonna 
give a couple minutes just so that if anyone's still working, they can catch up and then we'll get started. All right, so hopefully everyone's in a good place. Let's go ahead and expand task one, create the app. So like we just did, we just signed in and you should be on the app builder home or at the Apex homepage. We're gonna go ahead and click app builder as step two instructs, we're gonna click app builder. And then once we get to the app builder page, we're going to click the create button. So let's click app builder. And then this is the app builder home and we wanna create a new app. So we can either click this here or the create button here as well. Now we have three options to create an application. Today, we're just going to select new application we're here on step four, and that's it for task one. Task two, we're going to set some, some things for our application before it's actually created. So first we're going to set a name for our application. We're gonna call it movies watch list, and then we're going to select a theme and some things for the appearance. So let's name our application movies watch list. In appearance, we're gonna click the expand button. We're gonna select the Vita dark theme and let's choose a new icon. I'm gonna select the red color swatch and the smiley face icon because it's fun and we like movies. Click set application icon. We can see our icon has been updated. We still have Vita dark selected. So let's save these changes. So we just did all of this. Now we're going to mo modify our homepage just a little bit. So in the create application wizard, the homepage has already been added for us. So we're going to edit this by clicking the edit button. We're just gonna rename this page to my watch list. And let's set a new icon we're going to do film. So search for film because that makes a little bit more sense for our application. These are the only modifications we're going to make to our homepage right now. Click save changes. There's some extra features and settings at the bottom. We're just going to leave these alone for now. And let's go ahead and click create application. So that will take us to the end of task two and let's go ahead and expand task three. So our application has now been created. This is our application homepage. What we wanna do next is we're going to run our application and to do that really easy way. There's a couple ways from the application homepage option one, which is the way we're gonna go is click run application. You can also click this play button up in the top right corner as well. So let's click run application. We're gonna to need to sign in. So your workspace username, mine was page, and your workspace password is what you want to enter here. Click sign in. And this is what our runtime application looks like. So in five minutes, maybe we have created an application and we can already run our application way, way easy compared to trying to build something from scratch with a lot of code that takes a long time. In just five minutes, we've already created an application and it's up and running. And this is our home page. So now let's move on to task four we're gonna update the theme of our app. The colors right now are fine, but we'd like something to match this red a little bit. So we can update our theme by selecting the theme roller from our develop developer toolbar. So this gray toolbar down at the bottom, this is our developer toolbar. You click on customize, select theme roller. It's going to bring up our theme roller. We can see our selected theme right now is Vita Dark which is what we set when we were creating our application. We're gonna update some of the global colors here. 
Now, this is where one of the differences between 21.1 and 21.2, those two Apex versions, is going to come into play. You can check your version of Apex that you're working in right here in your App Builder page. On the bottom right corner of your screen, you can see we're in Application Express, Express version 21.1.7. Now, if you are if you are using 21.2, then this is where you're going to see it's going to say 21.2 instead of 21.1. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to update some of the colors. Um, in our instructions, we see that we're going to click on the global colors to expand the drop down, and we want to use this hex color code. So just go ahead and copy this code. In your theme roller, we're going to select the sw color swatch next to header accent, and we're going to paste our color code that we just copied. Hit enter or return if you're using a Mac. And we can see that the color has automatically been updated along with the link color and the focus outline. We're also going to go ahead and update the body accent. So we're going to copy this code. Select the color swatch, paste, enter. And now all of our colors have been updated. So this looks pretty good. We're gonna, we now wanna save our style. We're gonna save it as movies dark and go ahead and close the theme roller window. I'm gonna click save as movies dark, save. And now we can see that our selected theme has been updated to movies dark. So let's go ahead and create, close the theme roller. And that will mostly wrap up lab one. If you would like to go ahead and sign up for a API key on the movie database, then this is where task five will come in. You can go to the movie database to sign up for a free account, follow their getting started instructions. Um, and then this is a little screenshot that we looked at earlier. Um, you can also play around with making API requests. And so here are some instructions to do that, to just try it out. But this is what we're going to be using for our application in lab two. So now we know how to create, run, and update the theme of an application, and we can go ahead and move on to the next lab. So I'm gonna click on lab two. Lab two is where we're going to need our API key for the movie database. So in the Slack channel, I will be sending the workshop TMDB API key. This is what you guys are going to want to copy and store somewhere or just have it somewhere that you can easily access it for this workshop. Like I said earlier, this key will be deactivated after the workshop is over. So if you want to continue using your application, then you will need to you will need to sign up for your own and save that API key somewhere. All right, so API key has been sent. It's also in the Zoom chat as well if you would like to access it there. I don't see too many questions, which I think is a good sign. So we're going to go ahead and get started with lab two. All right, so in this lab, we're gonna be setting up a couple of REST data sources, which will allow us to get different types of data from the movie database. The first data that we wanna get is a list of current popular movies. So we're gonna create a REST data source to get those movies and be able to use that later. We'll be able to use those movies, that data later in our application to display it in our movies watch list. Um, so back in our app builder tab, we're still on our application home. We're going to want to click on shared components. On the shared components page, this is where a lot of our, um, a lot of the components that can be used across our application, this is where we can access them, modify them, add new ones, stuff like that. In the bottom right section or bottom left section, we have our data sources section. We're going to click on REST data sources from here. 
we can see that we don't have any REST data sources set up. And that's okay because we're going to go ahead and create our first one. So let's go back to our instructions. We just went to the REST data sources page. We're going to click the create button at the top or in the top right of the REST data sources window. Um, we're going to select from scratch and pick next or click next. So I'm going to click create from scratch already selected, which is great. Click next. So we're going to go ahead and call this REST data source popular movies. And we need now a URL endpoint. This is the URL that leads to, to the movie database API, which is going to return that data that we need for popular movies. So this is where our API comes into play. Here's our URL endpoint that we're going to be using. As you can see, we have a parameter within this URL, API key equals API key. So we are going to replace the uppercase API underscore key. This is where our TMDB API key is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL and paste it, not here, paste it here. This is now where I'm going to copy the TMDB API key, and I'm going to replace API underscore key with that API key. Make sure you don't have any spaces anywhere in your URL. Sometimes that can happen when copying and pasting things over. So you want this to be one string right here, no spaces. So we're good to go on this page. We're going to click next. Now here's where, uh, actually not quite after this step. So here we want to set the base URL and the service URL path. We're going to modify the base URL just a little bit and move this movie part of the base URL. We're going to move that to the service URL path. And this is because the base URL is going to be consistent across our REST data sources that, that, that we're creating. So we want to be able to access this and and with the slash movie in it, that makes it very specific to the popular movies um, REST data source. So make sure that the API key is also replaced here in the instructions. You can also copy over the URL from here. We're going to now click next. Um, if you're on Apex 21.2, like I said, we should be able to see the version in the bottom right corner. If you're on Apex 21.2, this is where there's going to be a slight difference between the versions. So instead of seeing authentication on the next step, you will see a option for pagination settings. We're not going to be using that today, so you can just click next. If you click next, that will take you to the authentication page. And right now we don't need to set up authentication for this step because it's already included in our URL. And so let's go ahead and click discover. Now, hopefully everything has gone well up to this point. If you've followed the steps, then this is what you should be seeing. This is a list of current popular movies from the movie database. What Apex has done is it's organized the returned data into this table. And so we can see the different columns that we have and we can see all the different current popular movies. So in our instructions, we've made it to this step, discover. And we're going to move on to task two. So task two, we want to edit the REST data source profile. This is because 
if you see on the REST data source discovery page, we have this column called poster path. What the poster path is, it's a unique identifier or a unique path to a specific poster image for a movie. This is different for each movie and it's not the full URL. There's actually no column that's been included in this return data that has the full URL. So we can't just enter this poster path and go get the image. We need some string on the beginning of this that will take us, that will provide a link to the movie poster. So we are going to update the REST data source profile so that we can create a new column that is the full URL to the movie poster. So if you haven't already, click Create REST Data Source to create that popular movies data source. We can see it's now here in our REST Data Source page. We're going to go ahead and click on that REST Data Source name to open the Edit REST Data Source page. Here we can see lots of information about the REST Data Source we just created. But what we're interested in right now is the data profile. Here we can see that the data source returns 13 columns all which are visible and there are zero derived columns. We're going to create a derived column by editing the REST data source profile. So click the edit data profile button. And here we can see all the columns that we're getting back from the REST data source. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new column by following these instructions. So here we've already selected a data profile. On the data profile page, we've clicked add column. We're going to title this new column poster URL. It's going to be visible so that we can use it later in our application. The column type is going to be a SQL expression, which is different than the other column types, which are type data. So we're going to have a SQL expression in which we're going to use this expression to concatenate the first part of the URL that we need with the unique poster path that gets returned in the poster path column. So let's go ahead and copy this SQL expression. We're going to go back to our REST data source page, enter our title. We're calling it poster URL, select visible change the column type to SQL expression and paste the SQL expression as is. Once you unfocus from the SQL ex expression text field, it automatically updates the data type because it recognizes that it's a bar car. And we're good on this page. So let's go ahead and click create. If we scroll down into the data profile columns, now we can see that we have our poster URL column, which is a SQL expression, and it is visible. So let's apply changes. The data profile page has been updated to show now that we have 14 visible columns and one is derived, and the derived column is the one that we just created. That concludes, we're gonna, once we click apply changes at the top, that will conclude task two. And we're going to go ahead and move on to task three. So we're going to do something very similar um, to our creating our popular movies REST data source, but we're going to use a plugin to help us create this data source. And this is because the way that the movie database works is when you search for a movie, you need to search for with a query and you will be the return data will only re return one page of data. And so by using this plugin, we can actually return all of the results when searching for a movie instead of just one page of results. So the first step we wanna do is download the plugin. So just click to download the plugin. Um, in our app builder, we're going to go to our movies watch list home by clicking the application and application number at the top left. So mine is application 100. I'm going to click that to go back to my app home. And here I'm going to need to import this plugin so that I can use it. So click export slash import, select import. 
And this is where we're going to import our plugin that we just downloaded. So you can click and drag, you can click on this to open your downloads. So open the file that you just downloaded. It should be titled web source type fixed page size dot SQL. For file type, we're gonna select plugin and click next. Once it's been installed, or then once it's been imported, then we're gonna click next again, and we're going to click install plugin. And now our plugin has been installed. So we can see it here. This is again within our shared components of our application under plugins. So now we're gonna go back to our REST data source page and create a new REST data source using our plugin that we call search movies. So to get back to our REST data sources, we're gonna click on shared components from the navigation in the top left, back down to data sources, click on REST data sources, and we're gonna create a new one by clicking the create button. Again, we wanna create one from scratch, so click next. And this is where a plugin comes into play. So we're going to select the REST data source type is going to be this plugin. It should be an option from the list here. We're going to title this search movies. And we're going to slightly update this URL endpoint by copying over the URL endpoint from the instructions. and pasting it here. Notice that API underscore key is still here. We need to change that so that's our API key. So let's copy over our API key and paste. Make sure there are no spaces anywhere. We should be good to go. Something that's important to notice is these extra parameters that are on the end. So, like I mentioned earlier, we need to query for a, um, a movie or, or we're trying to find all the movies here with Harry Potter in the title. So that's how, our, that's how we will get a list of Harry Potter movies through searching. But also notice that we're only getting page one. This is where the plugin will help with this. So let's click next. Because we already set up popular movies, it automatically recognizes the remote server and the base URL, because since we updated our base URL, it is now going to be the same across our, our um, REST data sources. Make sure your API key is still here, especially if you're copying over the URLs from the next step. We're gonna click Next, for those of you on 21.2, this is where you're gonna see pagination. You can just click next again. And now we're on the authentication page. We are going to set up auth authentication for this, this REST data source because we need it for our plugin. So turn authentication required to on. Our authentication type is going to be a URL query string. We're gonna title it API underscore key, all lowercase. And our value is going to be our rest or our TMDB API key. So you want to copy that API key into the value field. Now, if we click discover, we can find all movies with Harry Potter in the title. So as you can see, we're getting a lot of Harry Potter based things. Um, these are our different columns that we're getting. Just like we did for the popular movies REST data source, we're gonna also modify the data profile for search movies so that we have a column with the entire poster URL instead of just the poster path. So let's click create REST data source. And let's 
catch up in the instructions here. We're on step seven. We're gonna go back to task two and follow the same steps for search movies that we did for popular movies to create our po poster URL column. So now we're back to task two. We're going to click on our REST data source, search movies now instead of popular movies. And since the last page we were on is data profile, uh, it takes us back to the data profile, which is very helpful here. Again, just like popular movies, we have 13 visible columns. We're gonna edit our data profile so we get one derived column as well. Again, we can see all of the current columns. Let's click add column. And we're gonna title this poster URL, just like we did for popular movies. Make it visible. We're gonna set the column type to be a SQL expression. And we're going to copy over our SQL expression where we're concatenating the first part of the URL string with the poster path. Copy that into SQL expression, data type gets automatically recognized. Let's click create. Just like popular movies, we can see that the poster URL column has been added. This looks good. So let's click apply changes. And we have our derived column, our number of columns that are visible have been updated as well. And click apply changes again. That finishes editing the REST data profile. We can go back to the bottom of task three. And we now know how to create and edit REST data sources in Oracle Apex so that we can get data from the movie database to use for our, our application. With that, we can now use, we can now proceed to the next lab. All right, so hopefully everyone's doing pretty well at this point, haven't had too many troubles. Um, now that we've set up our REST data sources and we have our application, we can start creating new pages and actually adding content to the pages in our, our application. Because right now, this is what our runtime application looks like. Not very exciting. We would love to be able to see some of the data that we're actually getting from the movie database. So in lab three, the focus is gonna be creating the movie search page. We're going to set up the movie search page so that we can view the popular movies and search for a movie of our choice and view the search results. Let's go ahead and expand task one. First step is we're gonna, we're gonna to need to go to page one of our application. From your app builder, you can get back to your application home by clicking Mine says application 100. Yours should be the number of whatever your application ID is. Go, so this is app home. We're gonna click on page one, my watch list. This takes us to our page designer, which is where we will be able to add things like regions and buttons and page items to actually add content and, and populate pages in our application. So it might look overwhelming at first, but it's pretty easy to get started, pretty, pretty easy to get going, and it'll make more sense as we move forward. So we're on page one. The first thing we need to do is just modify a few things for our, our, our page one, and then we're going to create a button. So we're gonna set the title of page one to my watch list, or title of the breadcrumb to my watch list, um, so in the rendering pane on the left, you want to click on the breadcrumb on the region underneath breadcrumb bar that now says movie watch list. In the property editor on the right, you want to update the title to say my watch list. Once I unfocus from here, we can see that our region in the rendering pane has been updated to now be titled my watch list. And we're going to now create a button. So there are a few ways to create regions. 
Um, option one is down here on the bottom, we can see all the regions, all the options that we have. We can see different item types in here. These are all page items. I'll actually expand that up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And we can also create buttons. Another way to do this is by right clicking on our rendering tree, on items in our rendering tree. We can create a region, subregions, page items, lots of things here. This is my preferred way to do things, but you can also drag and drop some of these items into our layout view, which, which is right here in the middle. So we're going to right click on my watch list and we want to create a button. So now we can see we have our new button. Let's change the button name. We're going to call it add movie. Add underscore movie. When I unfocus, the label automatically gets updated. We're going to change this just a little bit to say add a movie instead of add movie. We want to set our button position to next. So in the layout group, button position is going to be next. We're going to go to the appearance group. We're going to set the button template to text with icon. We want the button style to be hot. So that we're going to turn that on. And then we're going to set a few template options. So under appearance, button, button template is going to be text with icon. Hot is on. And template options, we're going to click that to open up this dialog where we can set a bunch of different template options. Right now, our focus is going to be up here in common. The settings we want to set, we're going to check hide label on mobile. We're going to set the icon position to the left, which means it'll be left of the text in the button. And then we're going to set OK. We're going to click OK to save and close the dialog. And finally, we're going to set the icon as well. So let's check hide label on mobile. Icon position is going to be left. Click OK. Icon, we want to do FA plus for add a movie. Now we're going to click Save, and that will wrap up task one. In task two is when we're going to actually create the movie search page. So click Save. Let's expand task two. And the first step is create a new page. So from within Page Designer, we can go to our create menu up here. We can create a new page. We can create a page as a copy. We can create shared components, lots of things up here. Right now, we just want to create a new page. So we're going to click page. This is within the create page wizard. We're just going to click it blank page because we just want a regular blank page for right now. Page number should be two. And we're going to title this movie search. We're going to change the page mode to modal dialogue and click next. We're not going to set up any navigation preferences. We only want this page to be accessible when we click the add movie button. So click next. And then we're going to click Finish. So now we've created page two, and Page Designer has been updated. Now we're viewing our page two instead of page one. Let's catch up in the instructions. We're going to set a few things in page two. So first, we need to make sure that page two movie search is selected in the rendering pane. It is, we are good to go. Our property editor is showing us all the property groups and attributes for um, our page. So we're going to go down to appearance and click on template options. Within template options, we are going to check the stretch to fit window box under common. So in appearance, template options, we're gonna select stretch to fit window. What this is gonna do is this is going to have our page take up the entire window because our page is not a normal page, it's a modal dialogue. When we click the add movie button, it's going to open the dialogue 
And now with this setting, that dialogue is going to fill the entire screen instead of being small in the middle of our screen. So let's click OK. We're also going to add a line of JavaScript. So this line of JavaScript assists with refreshing the watch list page when the search dialog closes. And this is important because when we start adding and removing movies from to and from our watch list, we're going to want to reload our watch list automatically without having to do a full page refresh manually each time we add movies or delete movies. So we're going to add this line of JavaScript, copy and we're going to paste this within the dialog group within attributes. So that's where our line of JavaScript is going to go. Within the navigation group, we're going to set the cursor focus to be the first item on the page, and we're going to turn off warn on unsaved changes. So scroll down to navigation. Cursor focus is going to be for first item on page, uncheck worn on unsaved changes. And we also want to add a little bit of CSS because we're gonna style the movie cards and the, 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 some of the things that are on this movie search page. So you can copy this by just clicking copy from the code box. Scroll a little further in your property editor for the page and underneath CSS in this property group, you're going to expand the inline property. This opens the code editor. Here we can paste our CSS. Looks good. So we're going to click OK. So now we have a little CSS to make our movie search page look a little better. That wraps up task two, and let's move on to task three, where we actually will set up our popular and searched movies regions so that we can view our data. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna create um, a container for our two regions. So we're gonna right click on content body and create a new region. So in your rendering pane on the left, find content body, right click and create region. We're going to change the title of this region to be movie cards. And what we want to do is we're going to update the template. So if we scroll down in the property editor, we're going to change the template to be blank with attributes because we don't want this region to do anything other than contain our two other regions. So we just did this step, step two. Let's move on to step three. We're gonna create a sub region called popular movies, which is going to be a region of type cards. And the source for this region is going to be our rest source that we set up for popular movies. So right click on movie cards, create sub region, title this popular movies, Now here's where we change the type. Select cards, which should be the third option from the top. And now we can see immediately we have been alerted that we're missing some information. We cannot run this page. We cannot save this page until this issue has been fixed. So here's where our source comes in. We're going to change the source location to rest source. So instead of the local database, we're going to choose rest source. Here, we're required to select a rest source. So let's choose popular movies, but we can also see that search movies is an option here. So any rest source that we have set up up to this point is available here. I'm gonna click popular movies. Oh, there it is. Um, and our next step is setting up some of the attributes for our popular movies region. So in our property editor for popular movies, we have right now we're just looking at region properties. We can select attributes to set some more things for our popular movies cards region. So first thing we wanna do is we're going to update the number of columns we have 
excuse me, we're going to update the number of grid columns. Right now it's just automatic. We want five columns of cards. So set choose five columns for grid columns. We also need to set a primary key column for our card. So we're going to select ID, move down to title. For each card, we want to display the title in the title region for our card. <clears throat> Subtitle, we're going to get a little fancy here. We're going to select advanced formatting. Here, we can now enter an HTML expression instead of selecting a column, right? So if I turn this off, I have the option to select a column. I'm going to turn it on and we're going to copy over this HTML expression and paste it here. So I can expand this if I want, paste my HTML expression. And what's the, what this HTML expression is going to be, it's going to get the vote average or the, the rating for a movie. Um, and it's just going to display that on our card for each movie. Here's a little screenshot if that's helpful. So we set ID, we set title, we set the subtitle. We're gonna scroll down to media. We're gonna set the source to URL column, the URL column to poster URL. Um, and then we're gonna set the position appearance and sizing as well. So in your property editor, just keep scrolling down until you see media. And we're gonna change the source to URL column. This is where it's important to make sure that your, you correctly updated your REST data source profile because here is where we can now access, we'll now be able to get our poster URL, which we added. So select poster URL for our URL column. We're gonna change the position to first, the appearance to square and the sizing to cover. So that's it for popular movies. We're gonna follow the same process for search movies, except to make it a lot easier, we're just going to duplicate the popular movies region and then update the title and the rest source. So right click on popular movies in the rendering pane on the left, right click, go down to duplicate. And now we have a second region we're going to update the title to searched movies. And we're going to set the rest source to search movies instead of popular movies. So underneath source, rest source, go to search movies. We do need to set the pagination attributes for the search movies region, because if you remember, we're using the plugin to get all the search results at one time. So select attributes in the property editor. We're going to scroll all the way down past media. Underneath performance, there's the pagination group. We're going to change the type to page. And we want to see 25 cards or 25 movie results per page. And that will wrap up task three. We have two more tasks left for this lab. Task four, we're going to add the search bar and then we're going to link page two back to page one so that we can see what we've done so far. Let's expand task four. And in the dialog header in the rendering pane, we're going to right click on that and select create region. So rendering pane, select dialog header, click right click and create region. We're going to title this search bar. We're going to set the template to blank with attributes and we're going to add a little bit of CSS um, by including the CSS class padding SM padding dash SM. So change the title to search bar. Scroll down to appearance, set template to blank with attributes. 
CSS classes padding dash SM. Just going to add a small amount of padding around the search bar. So then we're going to create a page item within our search bar region, and we're going to title that P2 search. So let's go back here, right click on search bar, and we're going to do create page item. So now we have a new page item within the search bar region that we just created. Change the name of the item to P2 search. We're going to leave it as a text field. We're going to update some of the properties. So we want to set the template to hidden. That will hide the label. Um, add a few template options and add an icon and a placeholder as well. So scroll down to template. Set the template to hidden. Click on template options. We want to stretch the form item across the page. And we're going to set the size to extra large. Click OK. We're going to add the FA search icon. And we're going to add the search for a movie placeholder. So value placeholder, we're going to set to search for a movie dot dot dot. We're going to turn off on unsaved changes. This is in advanced at the very bottom of the property group. So ignore worn on unsaved changes. And now what we want to do is modify the server side condition for popular and search movies. Now what this is, is if we were to run this page right now, we would see the search bar at the top, and then we would see the popular movies, and then underneath popular movies, we would see all our search movies, which is not really what we want. We only want to see popular movies if popular movies if we haven't searched for a movie yet. We only want to see searched movies if we've already searched for a movie. So what we can do is we can set our server side conditions, which bas basically is setting a condition for a region or an item or a button. And if that condition evaluates to true, then that component will display on the page. If it's set to false, or if it evaluates to false, then the component will not render on the page. So our condition, we only wanna see popular movies if our P2 search item is null, if there's nothing that's been searched. So we're going to set type to item is null because we're looking for our P2 item, P2 search item. Now we can set our item. We're going to select P2 search. So now if P2 search is null, then popular movies will display because this condition will be true. Similarly, for search movies, we want search movies to display if the P2 search item is not null. So if someone has searched for a movie. So let's select item is not null. Same thing, we're going to select P2 search. And now this will evaluate to true if a user has searched for something in the P2 search bar. Um, we also need to update the query for searching movies or have a way to submit whatever the value of P2 search is to, along with our, our query to the movie database API to get a list of movies, to get a specific set of movies based on what is being searched. So in our rendering pane underneath search movies, we can see we have actions and we have parameters. Let's expand our parameters. We can see we have API key and a bunch of other parameters. API key, if we click on that, we see that API key that we use to set up our REST data sources. So let's click on query. And this is what, what we want to update so that we can search for whatever we want, not just Harry Potter. Because right now, if we were to search for something, it's going to return results for Harry Potter no matter what. So what we need to do is we need to change the type. The, the type 
is going to be item. And this is where we can select our P2 search item. So now whatever the value of P2 search is, is going to be the value of this query parameter. We're going to save our changes in the top right. The button, the play button next to save will save and run the page. However, because this is a modal page, you cannot run modal pages directly from page designer. Modal pages can only be accessed through the runtime application. And this is where we will need to set up, finish setting up our add movie button so that we can open the movie search page when that button is clicked. So if I tried to run this page right now, dialog pages cannot be run directly from page designer. So the last task in this lab is going to be linking our two pages together. So let's go down to page one. And on page one, remember we have our add movie button. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. What we wanna do is in the behavior group in our property editor, we are going to set the action to redirect page in this application. So we've clicked on our button in the right pane. Let's scroll down to behavior, set action. Right now it's submit page. So if we were to click the button, it would just refresh the page. We're gonna change it to redirect to page in this application. Now we're required to set a target link. So let's click on the no link defined. Here we can set our page number target. We can either do this by typing in a page number or clicking the options button to the right where we can pick a page. So we see we have our login page, our home page, and our movie search page. So we want to do the movie search page. We also want to enter a value for clear cache. We're going to do two because what this is going to do is this every time the page two is opened from the add movie button it's going to clear the value of the p2 search item so if you close the the movie search dialog and then try to reopen it by clicking add movie it will um it will reset the, val the value of p2 and so whatever you were searching before will no longer be there and instead you'll be viewing popular movies again. So that's all we're gonna do here. We're gonna click okay. And then we will also need to add a dynamic action so that the My Watchers page will update properly when the movie search page dialog closes. So let's right click on the add movie button and we're gonna select create dynamic action. Um, I see that I should hopefully slow down a little bit. So I will try to rein it in just a touch. So up to this point, we should have our page two set up with our popular movies and search movies regions and our search item. And now we are linking page one and page two so that when we click on the add movie button, it will open page two. So like I said, the instructions want us to create a dynamic action for the add movie button. We're gonna right click on add movie and we have a few options here we're going to select the second option create dynamic action so i'm going to click on that we can see that we have a new dynamic action that was created we're going to give it a new name we're going to title it refresh on dialog closed so select the, the new dynamic action 
And under identification, we're going to set the name to refresh on dialogue closed. We're also going to, I see we have a raised hand. Um, we're also going to update the true action. So this is the action that is going to execute when the add movie button is, is clicked. So to get here, you'll need to expand the, the arrow next to refresh on dialogue close. You should be able to see the true action, which, which right now says refresh. So we're gonna change the action from, sub, from refresh to submit page. So, identification action, we can see our list of different actions. So instead of refresh, we're gonna go down to a navigation action and click submit page. So that will be the last step for what we need to do in page designer for this lab. Now we can save and run the page and we will be able to save and run this page because this is page one. So this is a normal page, not a modal dialogue. We're able to run and save and run this page directly from page designer. So to do that in the top right, you're gonna click save and run the play button should be right next to the save button. I'm gonna click save and run. And now this is our updated runtime application. So you can see now we have this add a movie button. And if we click on add a movie, it will open our movie search page. And you should see this list of popular movies that we can scroll through. Or we can search for a movie. So say we search for Harry Potter. Click enter. Then we can see all the results for Harry Potter. This is results number one through 25. As you remember, we set the pagination for this page. So that would show 25 results at the time. If we click next, we can see the last few results. We'll go back to the beginning page. So in not very long at all, now we have our movie search page with some good looking movie posters and movie cards. And we have our ad, ad movie button set up. Uh, if I wanna search for, let's search for the Avengers. We get all of the results for, for movies with Avengers in the title. Um, if we clear our search, we are back to popular movies. Let's search one more time for, we're gonna do Avengers again. If we close this page now with Avengers being the last thing we searched, our watch list page gets updated. Let's add a movie again and see that our search bar has been cleared and we're back to viewing popular movies. This concludes lab three. You should now be able to search for a movie and view popular movies. I'm going to do maybe a, a couple minute break just so people have time to get caught up up to this point. Um, I can help answer questions if people have them. Um, but a couple minute break for everyone to get caught up. Hey, everyone. So. It looks like we have a question about lab four. And so we're going to get to lab four in a minute, but um, 
the it will be very important to when we're going to be setting up another REST data source. And so that will be for movie details. And it'll be a little different because you're going to have to go to the advanced section when setting up that REST data source. And you're going to have to change the way that Apex selects the data from that gets returned from the movie database. So in the advanced section of the REST data source setup process, you will have to type a single dot or a single period in the text field for row selector. Um, and then when you do that, that will select all the data from the root of the object that gets returned. Basically, a JSON object will be returned from the movie database with the different columns and different fields of data that you need. And so it's a little different than the popular movies and the search movies REST data sources. So because of the different format, you'll just need to do that extra step when setting up the, the movie detail source. We'll go over it in a minute. It'll make more sense once you see it, but I saw uh, there was that question. So hopefully that helped clarify a little bit. So hopefully everyone who's still on lab three is getting close to finishing that part up. Um, we're gonna start lab four and I'll try to move through it slowly so that those who are still in lab three have time to finish that and catch up with lab four. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on lab four in the workshop instructions page. And in lab four, we're going to create a new REST data source called movie details that will contain the details for a single movie. After we set that up, we're gonna create a new page, a third page for our application, which will display those movie details when a user clicks on movie from the movie search page. So our first task is going to be creating the movie details REST data source. This for the most part will be fairly similar to how we set up the popular movies REST data source but it's a little more involved, like I mentioned, because you have to define that response structure. Um, and we're going to have to specify a, a variable to be able to query for any movie that we want. So like we did for popular movies and search movies, we're gonna go back to our shared components page and click on REST data sources and click create. So I'm gonna go back to my page designer. From within page designer, we can quickly access the shared components page by clicking on this button right next to save. So in the right corner, the, up, the top right corner, we have this shared components button. I'm gonna click this and that takes us to this familiar shared components page where we can Go to our data sources section, click on REST data sources. From here, we're gonna click create. We're gonna leave the creation method to from scratch. Click next. We're gonna title this REST data source movie details and we're gonna copy this URL endpoint. Notice that this URL endpoint at the end has colon movie underscore ID. So this is creating a variable which will allow us to substitute any, it will allow us to, to put in any movie ID in for this bind variable right here. And that will allow us to query for whichever movie details we need based on the movie card we click on from the movie's search page. 
So we're going to title this movie details, paste the URL endpoint. When we unfocus from that URL endpoint, we now have a new, a two new text fields in addition to the HTTPS host name text field. We have URL parameter one movie ID, which matches that colon movie ID at the end of our URL endpoint. We're gonna set the value right now to be 505, which is just the value of a, a movie ID. We're gonna click next. And again, Apex automatically recognizes the remote server and base URL. We can leave the service URL path and we're gonna click next. Now we do need authentication because it was not included in the URL earlier. So we're gonna click or we're gonna select the authentication type. We're gonna set that to URL query string. The name of that will be API underscore key. This is just like we did for search movies. We're gonna copy the API key that we are using. And instead of clicking discover, this is where things get a little different. We're going to click advanced instead. So click advanced. This is where we can set up some additional details for our REST data source. So you can see that we already have that, that movie ID variable from that very first page of setting up our, our REST data source. That's here underneath our parameters. We also need to update the row selector. So we haven't done this for our last two one, our last two data sources. We this is just left empty. Apex automatically detects where the results are coming from. But we need to to update. We need to modify the the row selector because the structure of the re returned data is a little different for movie details. So all you're going to do is enter a single period, just a dot. That's what it should look like. Um, change the returns value to single row instead of table because you're just getting a single row of data for a single movie, not a full table, not a, not a bunch of different rows, just one single row. Now, now that we have the row selector set to the period and the returns set to single row, now we can click discover. We can see that now we only have one row returned, one movie returned. This movie is Johnny Handsome and we can see some information about this movie. And these are all the columns that we're getting. So after we create our REST data source, we're going to also update the data profile for this data source as well. Let's go ahead and click create REST data source. Now we have popular movies, search movies, and movie details. So now we have three REST data sources. So in lab two, when we modified the data profile for popular movies and search movies, we only added one column, which was for poster URL. We're gonna add two columns. One is for poster URL again, just like we did last time. The other one is for the backdrop URL. So we're going to follow the instructions from lab two, task two. And we're going to click on our movie details rest source. Takes us to the data profile page. For this source, we can see now we have 21 columns that are all visible. So this is 
what gets returned with movie details. Let's edit our REST data profile by clicking the Edit Data Profile button. And here we can scroll through all 21 of those columns that we get back from movie details. Click Add Column. We'll start with Poster URL. We're going to make this visible. And just like we did for popular in search movies, change the column type to SQL expression. Let's copy our SQL expression from lab four. And we're going to paste that into our SQL expression text box. This should hopefully be very familiar since we did it in lab two. We're going to click create. We can see our new column. And instead of clicking apply changes, we're going to add, click add column again. Now we're going to name this one backdrop URL. And we're going to concatenate the same beginning URL with the backdrop path. So the poster path is that same poster image that we see here. It's the unique identifier for this, for each of these individual poster images. Similarly, backdrop path is the unique identifier for a slightly different image that we will use as a background image instead of the poster image. So we're going to name this new column backdrop underscore URL, make it visible. And we are going to change the column type to SQL expression. Paste the SQL expression. And let's create our new data sort, a new data column. We have our two new data columns here. Looks pretty good. They're both visible. Let's click apply changes. Let's click apply changes again to go to our REST data source home. And that wraps up task one of lab four. Task two, we're going to create the movie details page. And then we're going to connect that page in task three to our, um, to our movie details REST source. And then we're going to connect the movie details page to our movie search page. So let's expand task two. So just like we did for the movie search page, we're going to create a new blank page and we're going to set a couple page properties before we add our movie details rest data source to the page. So we're going to go to our movies watch list application home, click the create page button, select blank page and set some, some page name, some page details. So let's go to application home by clicking application 100. And then we're gonna select this create page right here above our existing pages. From our page type options, we're gonna click blank page. Page number should be set to three. This will be our third page in our application. We're going to title it movie details. And just like we did for the movie search page, we're also going to make this a modal dialogue page instead of a normal page. Let's click next. 
not, not doing anything with the navigation menu. So click next again, and then click finish. Page designer opens up in page three. And we can move on to setting a few properties. So we did this for the movie search page as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up the template options for page three movie details. And we're just going to select stretch to fit window. And that will wrap up task two. So we have page three movie details selected in our rendering page pane. And we're going to scroll down to the appearance group, select template options, check stretch to fit window, and click OK. Great, so that's task two. Now we're going to create a new region on the page that will be connected to our movie details rest source so that we can link that and set that up. All right, so first we're going to right click on content body and select create region. We're going to call this region movie. It's going to be type form. And then just like we did for popular and search movies, our location is going to be rest source and the rest source is going to be set to movie details. So I'm going to click on my page designer tab in the rendering pane on the left right click on content body and select create region we'll title this movie and we're going to change the type to form underneath source change the location to rest source and select movie details You'll also see popular movies and search movies, but set movie details as the rest source. As soon as that happens, new items are created on the page and it's one item for every column that comes from our rest source. So we have things like the title and the runtime and the tagline. So this is what will allow us to view information about our movie. All of these items will appear on the page and we'll be able to see those details. We're gonna click on P3 ID, which is the first item within the movie region. And what we're gonna do is we're going to scroll down to source and switch the primary key to on because this column serves as the primary key for this rest data source. So scroll all the way down to source, primary key, switch that to on. This is gonna be similar to how we set up the query for searched movies on page two. But if we look at the movie region in our rendering pane on the left in page designer, we have a, also a parameters um, dropdown. So if we expand that, we only have one parameter, which is movie ID. And if you remember, when we set up our movie details rest data source, we had this parameter. And so we're going to change this just like we did to query for search movies. We're going to change the type to be a item, a page item. And that will be the P3 ID page item because the ID is the is the unique movie identifier, which we will need to be able to get details for that specific movie. So let's change the movie ID value type to item. And our item is going to be P3 ID.
We're going to save our changes for this page. And then our last step for this lab is connecting the movie details page to the movie search page. So let's go ahead and save our page by clicking the save button. Remember that we can't save and run this page because it's a modal dialogue page. And we're gonna to navigate to page two, the movie search page. You can either do this by clicking the down arrow in the page navigation or entering two in the text box and clicking go. On page two, we wanna be able to open the movie details page anytime a user clicks on a movie from popular movies or search movies. So what we can do is we can create a new action for our popular movies and then our search movies cards regions. And that create action will be a full card action which will link to a new page. So in the rendering pane on the left, I'm going to click on actions, which is under popular movies. I'm going to create a new action and I'm going to change the action type. Oh, sorry, I'm going to leave the action type. I'm going to change the link target and that's going to be page three. So I can pick my page, I'm gonna pick page three. Now what I need to do, so what I've done so far is I've clicked on the no link to find next to target. I've set my page number to three. This will open page three from page two anytime a user clicks on a specific movie from page two. What we also need to do though, is we need to set the ID item, the value of the ID item on page three so that it is the value of the ID of the movie that you just clicked on. So if I click, if I go to the set items group in the link builder, I can set a name and a value. So let's click on the options button next to name. And I can see that all of my name options right here coming for, are coming from the target page. So I can set the value for any one of these page items from page three. We wanna set the ID on page three and the value of that ID is the value of the ID from this movie card, from the card on popular movies, in popular movies. We're gonna click okay. We're gonna do the same process for search movies. So right click on actions, click create action. Underneath link, let's set the target link page three, we're gonna set the P3 ID with the value of the ID of the movie that you clicked on and click okay. And finally, let's click save. We're gonna refresh our runtime application. And let's test it out. So, so we did need to update the type. So forgot a step. Um, the action that you created for popular and search movies, instead of a button, it needs to be a full card action. So what you'll do is you'll click on the current button action. If you also skip this step, like I did, you'll just change that to full card. And you wanna do that for both of these. Now, if we save our page and refresh, then we should be able to click on any of our movies. So let's click on Spider-Man No Way Home. And we can see all the details 
for Spider-Man No Way Home and all this information. Now I know it's two o'clock. I believe this session only is supposed to go until two o'clock. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but how are we doing for time? Um, the rest of the workshop is here. Um, and other than lab five, most of it is improving and expanding upon what we just built. So up to this point, we have our, our watch list page. This is our home page. We haven't quite set that up. That happens in lab seven. And so we have our watch list page. We are getting popular movies and we can search for a movie from our movie search page and we can view details for a specific movie as well. So we've covered a lot of information up to this point. We've primarily focused on setting up REST data sources, but lab five will focus on creating tables and an application item and process in order to then store movies and cr start creating your own personalized watch list. Uh, because up to this point, we're just getting data. We're not doing everything. Uh, we're not doing everything like storing data and, and updating stuff for our own personal watch list. Um, but if you're interested in continuing forward with this lab, I would totally recommend and you've gotten to see what the final product looks like. And so hopefully that inspires you guys to keep working on this. And um, hopefully you've learned a lot in this session and I'm happy to, to answer additional questions or like Jason said in the chat, if you have more questions, please reach out over Slack and um, just within that channel and yeah. If you enjoyed today's session, we would like to invite you to some of our upcoming events, and these will be taking place throughout April um, with more to come after that. And then we'd also like for you to share with us any feedback that you have on today's lab or what you'd like to see from us going forward so that we can keep improving our events. And then if you had any questions specifically about the live lab as well, um, you can go ahead and reach out at that email address. And then lastly, we have our quiz um, that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So we'd like to test your knowledge on what we learned today during the workshop. So if you complete several of these questions correctly, you'll achieve a developer pioneer badge that looks like this that you can share on all of your social channels. And so with that, I will just let everybody uh, take a few moments to ask any last questions. And that concludes our slides for the day. Thank you again, Paige, for this wonderful presentation and demo. And thank you all for joining us. And we hope to see you again next time.